The film opens with the South Korean conglomerate G Group getting ready to acquire On Group at the latter's headquarters in Seoul. The signing ceremony commences with the entrance of Chi Yao, the heiress of the Chi family, which holds a majority of stake in the G Group. President Jin Chen also arrives with his son Ao and assistant Shen Weijun. Jin Chen is known for his exceptional discipline and punctuality, and he has instilled these values in his son. The scene then cuts to the arrival of An Juju, accompanied by her son Booting. Juju is a fashion designer by profession, and interestingly, her son Booting bears a striking resemblance to Ao, to the point that they could be identical twins. Juju is an ostracized member of the An family, and her aim at the event is to steal the precious Aurora necklace, a valuable jewel that belonged to her late mother. It turns out that the An group intends to present this necklace as a gift to the G group during the signing ceremony. Juju instructs her son to patiently wait for her in the hall while she proceeds directly to the vault to where the jewel is securely stored. Parked in the building's garage is her friend and business partner Kai, who is there to assist her. After a while, Juju successfully gains entry to the vault in the case holding the precious jewel. However, as she opens it, she discovers that the jewel is missing. At that moment, the alarm system sounds and the guard swiftly responds and hurries towards the vault. It appears as if Juju is going to get caught, but thankfully, Booting cleverly diverts the guard's attention away from the room, ensuring his mother's escape. In the next scene, Shen Weijun suggests to President Jin Chen that they should leave the premises due to the security concern. However, Jin Chen realizes that his son Ao is nowhere to be found. During their search, he and his men come across Booting and mistake him for Ao. In the meantime, Jin Chen unexpectedly encounters Juju and feels a sense of familiarity upon seeing her. The latter clearly recognizes Jin Chen, but he struggles to recall where they might have met before. In a moment of panic, Juju pushes him away and hastily flees. Seeking to evade capture, she swiftly enters a restroom and changes her clothes to alter her appearance. Shortly after, she comes across Ao and mistakes him for her son Booting. So, she instinctively grabs him and runs away. Meanwhile, the assistant brings Booting in front of Jin Chen, and his different attire surprises him. However, Booting pretends to be the latter's son to avoid exposing his mother. In the meantime, Juju joins Kai in the parking lot, accompanied by Ao. As the two discuss the unsuccessful mission, the boy overhears their conversation and deduces that they are the culprits responsible for setting off the alarm. However, he continues to pretend to be Juju's son and drives off with them. Convinced Juju is the culprit behind the theft, Jin Chen takes matters into his own hands and reviews the CCT footage from the building, only to realize that the footage containing Juju has been deleted. Later, Jin Chen returns home with Booting, and the young boy is thrilled to discover Ao's collection of toys. Shortly after, he comes across a picture of Ao and finds himself wondering if they are twins due to their striking resemblance. At Juju's home, Ao also comes across a picture of his identical twin Booting, much to his astonishment. Meanwhile, Jin Chen orders his team to investigate the on-group president and Juju's father, Genko, as he suspects that the theft was likely an inside job. At night, both Ao and Booting feel homesick and try to run away, only to get caught. Troubled by their erratic behavior, Juju and Jin Chen decide to take the boys to a child psychiatrist. Ironically, they end up consulting the same psychiatrist. Meanwhile, Juju's business partner Kai visits Chi Yao at her office to discuss a project. Initially, Yao dismisses him and shows no interest. However, when she overhears Kai talking to Juju on the phone, her attitude suddenly shifts and she invites him for a meeting. One day, Jin Chen and Juju run into each other at the hospital and the former recognizes the latter from the party. Their sons Booting and Ao also come face to face, leaving the adults surprised by their striking resemblance. To get to the bottom of it, they ultimately decide to perform a DNA test. The test confirms that Booting and Ao are indeed twins and that Jin Chen and Juju are their biological parents. Jin Chen is taken back by the revelation, while Juju seems to be aware of the truth despite pretending otherwise. Nevertheless, the two accuse each other of abandoning one another, leading to a heated argument. Eventually, they turn to their children for their opinion, and Booting and Ao express their desire to live with both their parents. Left with no choice, Juju and Jin Chen come to an agreement to live together in Jin Chen's apartment with their children. However, due to his lack of trust in Juju, Jin Chen decides to move his office to his home. In addition, he discreetly instructs his lawyer to begin preparing paperwork for the custody of Booting. Later that night, Juju talks to Kai on the phone and hides the fact that she has moved in with Jin Chen. Unfortunately, Jin Chen overhears the conversation and becomes somewhat jealous upon hearing her speak with another man. The next day, it's revealed that the Aurora necklace was stolen by Yao. She's not pleased with Juju's return and wanted to sabotage the business deal between On and G Group. It appears that she has some history with Juju, who was running a successful fashion studio on Shigi Island before she recently moved back to Seoul. One day, Juju takes Ayo shopping while Jin Chen stays behind to take care of booting. After a while, he puts the boy to bed and joins Juju shopping. At a store when her car gets declined, Jinjin kindly offers to pay for the purchase. 
Juju feels embarrassed and promises to repay him with interest. Later, Kai informs Juju that he has secured an appointment with Yao, much to her joy. To celebrate, she indulges in some drinks and convinces Jin Chen to join her. As they both let loose, something unexpected happens. They engage in a passionate makeout session. From that moment on, the two become very close, and the relationship begins to strengthen. Elsewhere, Yao becomes aware of the budding romance between Jin Chen and Juju and decides to intervene. She seeks the help of Juju's stepfather, and he lures Juju into a meeting under the pretense of returning the stolen Aurora necklace. However, upon meeting her, he demands that she use her relationship with Jin Chen to save the struggling on group, threatening to take custody of her children. This angers Juju, and she firmly warns Jen Go to stay away from her children. Fortunately, Jin Chen arrives just in time and removes Juju from the situation. He hands Jen Ko over to the police, putting an end to his interference. The whole incident brings Jin Chen and Juju closer, but that night, Kai shows up at their apartment. Juju tries to send him away, but he forces his way in. He eventually comes face to face with Jin Chen and accuses him of abandoning Juju and booting in the past. This infuriates Jin Chen and leads to an altercation, but Juju intervenes in the nick of time and separates them. In the next scene, Kai implores Juju to return home with him, cautioning her that Jin Chen will abandon her once again. However, to his disappointment, Juju expresses her desire to give Jin Chen another chance. The following day, Jin Chen introduces Juju to his mother. Lo and behold, it's revealed that he's actually engaged to Chi Yao, and therefore, Miss Ji disapproves of Jin Chen's relationship with Juju. She insists that he marry Yao to solidify the business relationship between their families. However, Juju doesn't let his mother phase her, and she assures her that she is a better match for Jin Chen. The next day, Juju and Kai finally meet with Yo for the project, while Jin Chen insistently tags along with them. Yo purposely gives her the cold shoulder and instead tries to cozy up with Jin Chen. This makes Juju uncomfortable, and she politely cancels the meeting before leaving. Juju knows that maintaining a good relationship with Yao is crucial for securing the contract. Therefore, she decides to meet with Yao in person, understanding the importance of not upsetting her. They engage in a productive conversation, and Juju is ready to sign the deal with Yao's company. However, Jin Chen suddenly arrives and intervenes, preventing Juju from signing the contract. This leads to a fight between the two, and they argue as they drive back home. A flashback then reveals the origins of their relationship. They first met on Shili Island and quickly developed feelings for each other. Soon, Juju became pregnant with their twins, booting an AO. Unfortunately, things went south when she discovered that Jin Chen was engaged to Chi Yao. Despite Jin Chen's explanation that he was forced into the engagement by his family, Juju refused to listen and decided to leave with the twins. In a desperate attempt to make her stay, Jin Chen pleaded with her, leading to a devastating accident. This is why Jin Chen doesn't remember anything about their relationship. The scene then returns to the present where Jin Chen wakes up in his bed with Juju by his side. He realizes that the events were only a terrible dream, but he senses that his memories are gradually returning. Juju, on the other hand, claims that she doesn't remember anything. To make up for ruining her deal with Yao's company, Jin Chen's company offers a contract to Juju's studio. However, Yao vetoes the deal expressing dissatisfaction with Juju's work. Determined to prove herself, Juju makes a vow to come up with a better proposal. She works tirelessly throughout the night to improve her proposal, and the next day, she presents it before the board members of the G Group, which includes Jin Chen's mother. During the presentation, Yao attempts to sabotage her, but Jin Chen comes to her rescue and provides her with the master copy of her presentation. Juju's determination and impressive presentation leave a positive impact on Jin Chen's mother, and she finally gives them her blessing. This upsets Yao, but she refuses to give up and continues her efforts to destroy their relationship. She turns Juju against Jin Chen by informing her that he is seeking sole custody of booting an AO. This revelation deeply hurts Juju, leading her to confront Jin Chen. She finally reveals that she has never actually lost her memory and vividly remembers the accident. She laments her own foolishness for trusting him once again. Jin Chen attempts to explain that his desire for sole custody was from a time when he didn't know her, but Juju believes that he tried to get close to her in order to deceive her and gain custody of their children. Overwhelmed by her emotions, Juju packs her bags and decides to leave. Refusing to give up on her, Jin Chen turns to Kai for help in uncovering the truth about what transpired on Shili Island. After a lot of convincing, Kai finally agrees to help and reveals that their relationship started to sour because of Jin Chen's reluctance to introduce Juju and their children to his family. Furthermore, Yao manipulated Juju by convincing her that Jin Chen valued his family greatly and would never go against their wishes. This led Juju to make the difficult decision to leave Jin Chen, as she didn't want to force him to choose between her and his family. Meanwhile, following the accident, Yao mistakenly believed that Juju and Buding had perished, leading her to only bring Jin Chen and Ao back. 
However, Juju and Budding had survived the crash, although Juju lost her memory of AO. Meanwhile, Jin Chen suffered from amnesia and was unable to recall anything prior to the accident. Taking advantage of the situation, Yao fabricated a false narrative about the mother of Jin Chen's child, alleging that she had stolen his money and eloped with another man. These complex series of events and manipulations ultimately drove a wedge between Jin Chen and Juju. Later, Jin Chen finds Juju drinking heavily, so he immediately stops her and puts her to bed. The following day, he apologizes to her for hiding her from his family and promises to make up for all his mistakes. This time, Juju eventually forgives him and the two reconcile. Meanwhile, Jenko is released from custody and the first thing he does is kidnap Booting in AO. He then blackmails Juju into signing a document. It turns out, Juju's late mother had left her some inheritance and Jenko wants her to transfer it to him. To save her children, Juju reluctantly signs the document, but fortunately, Jin Chen again intervenes and hands him his ass before handing him over to the police. This time, Jenko is expected to be sentenced to jail for a really long time for kidnapping and forced trade. Later, Jin Chen proposes to Juju and she happily agrees to marry him. However, soon Yao arrives and warns him against marrying Juju by threatening to pull her family's investment out of G Group. This time, Juju stands up for her relationship and smacks some sense into Yao. Later that night, Jin Chen surprises her with her mother's necklace, which was found in Jenko's possession. The two then move on with their lives, but Yao is unable to let go. One day, she tries to run them over with her car, but her father intervenes just in time and stops her. He apologizes to Jin Chen and expresses his intention to continue to do business with the G Group. He also assures him that he will remove Yao from her position in the company. However, Jin Chen politely declines doing business with him in the future. As the days pass, pressure mounts on Jin Chen to find a replacement investor for the G Group. Fortunately, Juju comes to his rescue and invests in the G Group using the inheritance her mother left for her.